We've all created a to-do list before, but is there a better way to prioritize what's on it or make sure everything gets accomplished efficiently? How do they correlate to a positive well-being? This is a Healthier Michigan podcast, episode 156. And coming up, we discuss hacks to enhance how we create our to-do lists. Welcome to a Healthier Michigan podcast, the podcast dedicated to navigating how we can improve our health and well-being through small healthy habits we can start implementing right now. I'm your host, Chuck Gatica, and every other week we sit down with experts, certified experts, and we talk about topics that cover nutrition, fitness, and a whole lot more. And on this episode, we're diving into ways that we can all prioritize our to-do list and maximize productivity and maybe keep our brain centered, right? Because sometimes that whole thing can be overwhelming. With us today is a licensed therapist and counselor. She's got so many credentials. Angela Moore, you are like a ninja warrior of training and everything. So it's good to have you back. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be back. Yeah. And this idea of um, creating hacks to prioritize, for many of us, this just seems like it comes naturally, right? Sometimes creating a to-do list, though, can feel like a process in itself. It's just, it's another thing to do amongst the things to do. Some tasks are urgent. Uh, Some of them can wait. Uh, Some don't take much time to complete. Others take a lot longer. So uh, for many of us, it can be um, difficult to figure out how to prioritize, you know, which color (laughs) post-it, whatever your system is, is the one that you're going to tackle first thing today. So when it comes to creating a to-do list, is there a more effective way, is a big question, to write and organize our lists to maximize how tasks are completed? Is that a good place to start? How do we start this whole thing? Well, it's interesting. I actually don't like the phrase to-do list. Mm. You know, I almost like to say like goal list or get to do list. Um, and notice I said get to do because yeah. sometimes when we think about to do is something that we feel like we have to do. And so we kind of make it almost a negative thing. Um, the minute we start listing the tasks that we're trying to accomplish. And so I think if you think more goal oriented, what is it that I want to accomplish today? What is it that I want to accomplish over the week? Uh, that's going to allow me to get closer to my, you know, to the things that I'm trying to accomplish in my business and my personal life, uh, just an overall, and I will say an overall well-being because oftentimes some of the things that we put on our to-do list have a lot to do with the things that we're trying to accomplish as it relates to our health. And are we seeing those things that are on the list? as almost as things that we don't want to do that we have to do and we're reluctant to mm-hmm. to do them. Do you understand what I mean? I do. And I, and I think it's interesting because your skill sets and the reason I called you a ninja warrior, you know, if, because you're a trainer, you're a coach, but you're also a licensed therapist. So this idea of well-being becomes important. Although, to be fair, on our go get it done or go get it to-do list, we may have working out or training or getting a coach, right? That may be on the list, but I think if we focus on the well-being, why is it important that we connect getting things done with our wellness? Yeah. Well, because how many times have you uh, woke up with the intention of getting some things accomplished Mm -hmm. and not accomplished half of those things or, uh, or some of those things that you woke up with the intention to do. And then at the end of the day, you feel guilt, shame, conviction, you know, because you were not able to accomplish the things that you wanted to do. Sometimes you even feel like you failed. And yeah. yeah. And so it can have a very negative impact on your mental health and overall well-being. And that's why I like kind of a more goal oriented approach, because if you see it as goals, if you're not able to necessarily accomplish the goal um, for different reasons, you often look and say, okay, what is it that I didn't do or I need to do more of that's going to allow me to accomplish the goal? Whereas when you say to do, and then if you didn't do it, you tend to feel like, you know, like you messed up, like you made a mistake, you failed. Well, for some of us, isn't getting half of the things done uh, something to be grateful for? Because there are people walking around who maybe just got a quarter of the things or none of them done. So actually offering yourself, I don't know how to look at it, is grace or maybe in, you know, is the cup half full or half empty kind of perspective, right? Can you shift your thinking so that 
even getting half of your list done is a good thing. Most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. And that's why I say, you know, if you just rephrase it in terms of get to do as opposed to have to do, <laughs> yeah, right. you right. know, it, it automatically puts you in a spirit of grace, you know, mm-hmm. and graciousness, you know, and a thankfulness that you get to do the things on your list. And so if you're not able to accomplish, you know, as you mentioned, half of the things on your list, you don't feel a sense of failure as much as you may look back and reflect and say, okay, what is it? that I need to do um, better um, that's going to allow me to accomplish my goals. So before we get into some of the hacks, let's dig in a little deeper on this idea of mental health. So where have you seen with clients or even in your studies, this idea of creating an effective go get it done list? And how does that affect people's mental health? Well, it affects your mental health um, one, if you go in, it can affect your mental health in a negative way if you go in with the wrong mindset. Hmm. And so a large, you know, part of what we've already been talking about is what I try to recommend to my clients and the people who seek uh, my services for support is that when we wake up, it's an opportunity another day to accomplish some really great things. And if you can look at it from that perspective, you're going to start your day in a very positive way anyway. And when you're, yeah. And when you're trying to accomplish certain things, if you, the one thing I like about to do, to do lists or get to do lists is what you're doing is you're putting down what it is that you're trying to accomplish in writing, you know, and anytime, and then what it does, it almost becomes like a vision, a vision for your day, a vision for your week. And do you see how I'm kind of changing the way, yeah. The, yeah, the way that we're looking at it? And so uh, if you look at it from that perspective and you are prioritizing the things that you want to accomplish the most and you're doing those things, say maybe what I recommend at the beginning of the day, um, the minute you do that main thing, that most important thing that you want it to do, it's going to typically kind of give you some momentum to kind of continue to do the other, accomplish the other things that you have on your list. So it can have a very positive impact on your well-being, but it starts with a positive mindset about the items that you're going to be listing and prioritizing. And isn't it good for us to remember that feeling, whether we're literally getting a high five or whether we're just giving it to ourselves because we're the only ones home at that moment. We accomplished something. We got it off the list to go get it done and we got it done. Uh, I don't know. Focusing on that feeling is something good because it just kind of reinforces, well, you know, I've had this feeling before. It feels really good to get that stuff off the list, right? Yeah. And that's why it's so important to be mindful of what you're putting on your list. You know, and so one of the things that I recommend when you're creating a list, um, in addition to prioritizing the top things that you're trying to achieve, to make sure that they're relevant to the time um, where you are in your life and what it is that you're trying to accomplish. And yeah. a simple way of putting it, like right now we're going into the warmer months. And so it may be to your advantage to list things that um, apply to this time of year as opposed to listing things that may be months away. And, and the one thing about, and you'll appreciate this, depression is when we look too far behind or we tend to focus on things in the past. And anxiety is when you focus too far in the future. And so whenever you're creating your list, just like anything, I recommend that you're going to do it presently. So what is it that you're trying to accomplish at this present moment, at this present time in your life? And by that, when you are listing the things that you're trying to accomplish right now or in the very near future, um, it's going to be relevant to, you know, to what you're trying to do at this time as opposed to later or as opposed to something that you can't change in the past. So what aspects of this go get it done list do you think make up an effective list, right? Beyond what you just talked about, which is important because I I would not really have thought overtly about the context of the weather of the, you know, what is my physical health? I mean, you know, and you're talking about this in the sense of goals. So we all know, you know, using smart goals, if it's not achievable, be careful you know, unless you're a naiad and you're going to swim from Cuba to Key West and you know you can get it done somehow. But I mean, short of those gargantuan goals with somebody who's really special, um, 
be careful that you don't put something on there that's just going to take you out at the knees, right? That's another part of this. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, and keeping that in mind, what you just said, it's really important, one, like I said, to be mindful of the goals that you're listing, yeah. but also uh, categorize, right? categorizing those goals. Ah. So, yeah. So, you know, and, and one of the things that I truly recommend is that you create time and space to create your to-do list, your goal list. Um, because sometimes what happens and oftentimes what I find is when people are creating traditional to-do lists, they're kind of doing it as they're doing other things. So throughout the day, they may, you know, in the past, we'd have a piece of paper where we're writing things down that we don't want to forget to do. Yeah. Now we're using a lot of apps and we can talk about that and different things. You know, we may type up some things on the computer as we're working. The only problem with that is just kind of like you're you're putting things down as you're doing other things, as opposed to saying, I'm going to plan on a Saturday morning to list the things that I want to accomplish for the upcoming week. And then looking at that list and saying, okay, what are the things that I need to list um, first? Because maybe these those things are gonna require more time and energy, more mental clarity, uh, more focus, more time. And then, uh, and as you're listing your, the different items that you're trying to accomplish, looking to see which of those items are related so that, for instance, I may have a number of things that I have on my to-do list, my goal list that I can accomplish in my office. And so when I'm in my office, I'm going to list all the things that I want to accomplish while I'm in my office, where the next category may be things that I'm going to be shifting to that have more to relate, more and more related to my personal life. Yeah. And so maybe those are things that I'm going to be doing in a different area of my house or maybe outside. Maybe there are things that I'm going to be doing once I've left the house. But do you see how if you have thought about those things ahead of time, one, you can organize your schedule based on that. You can organize where you're going to be driving yeah. and how you're going to get there and the time uh, that you allocate for that because you've already thought about the things that you're trying to accomplish. So you're not going from here to there to there all over the place. You actually have an order you know, to the things that you're doing so that you're able to accomplish them in an efficient and effective way. You know, that's so cool to think about streamlining even your lists, because I suspect that while, and in your practice, I don't know what percentage is physical fitness, mental fitness, but when you think of mental fitness, if you're living in a world of chaotic thought, or you're living in a house that's disordered, where every single countertop is cluttered, you could get stuck, right? You kind of look at it like, oh my gosh, it's such a gargantuan thing. But streamlining the list to make it doable, to actually be able to get it done, would seem to me to really give you some freedom in your thinking, giving you clarity, not just the wins that come along with getting it done, but also that idea that you're just not surrounded by chaos. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and I love the way that you use the... Um items like in a room, like if you had things like chaotically, you know, placed throughout your, throughout a room, it yeah. makes you feel chaotic. The same would apply to a list. If your list is all over the place, uh -huh. you know, it's going to be very difficult to organize your, you know, your organize your actions and also to, um, you know, kind of arrange your thoughts so that you're going to be able to think, you know, in a very productive way and that you're going to be able to accomplish the things that you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. I am married to an organizational expert. I love it. She's not only good at puzzles, Angela, she's good at packing a car for a vacation, but she uses her phone and literally on her calendar, she'll hold her thumb and it lights up and she's moving these little tiny bar like things around. Well, what are you up to? Well, I'm this, I've got to get these things done today. And she's moving them back and forth. That's her hack. That's the way she keeps track. I'm a little bit more old school, right? I'm going with paper notes or something, but regardless what do you suggest that we start to think about? Uh, hacks is maybe a good way to look at them, but to enhance our productivity and organization skills. Because for some people, that electronic thing works. For some, they're like, oh, that's I don't even get it anyway. So that's just another thing to clutter my mind. Well, I would say that, you know, you, you kind of uh, hinted as to what is the solution. 
do what works for you. So yeah. if you've never used, you know, apps or the computer or a calendar on your phone <laughs> yeah. to organize your 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 to-do list, you know, your goal list, then that's probably going to be very stressful for you to start doing something that you've never done. And you may not have to. Your your life may not require you to get an app. You know, maybe the things mm -hmm. that you you want to do or you get to do are things that are easily accomplished and that can be easily you know, jot it down on a piece of paper. Um, however, for a lot of us, we're trying to manage a lot of different things and we are often on our computers and we can use apps on our computers and on our phones to our advantage. There are many different ones. Um, some of the top ones are gonna be like monday.com, Trello is another one and they allow you to arrange and you know, better organize the things that you want to do and actually monitor your progress. So you can see those things that oh. are urgent, those things that you um, have started, things that are progressing, things that are done. So it really does help you kind of organize your, your, your thoughts, organize the things that you're trying to accomplish, as well as monitor your progress as you are checking those things off the list. And so those tools can be very effective as long as you don't let it be, become something that's overwhelming. Yeah. You know, I, I sometimes, I have to admit this, I fall in and out of j the idea of journaling, right? Sometimes I'm good at it for a season and sometimes I'm not. And as I was thinking about our conversation today, I thought, you know, uh, getting your goals and your go get it done list together is almost the prequel to part of that idea of journaling in the future, because part of journaling is what's happening to me now, what's going to happen in the future, how I'm feeling. But part of it is in the rear view mirror, how what I did in recent past made me feel great or I'm grateful for it or whatever. And I thought that's a good way for me to look at getting things done, right, is to almost reverse engineer. What am I looking to feel like or, or want to get done and get back to the prequel of actually go getting it done. And for me, I'm thinking, well, that may be a good hack for me to think of it in those terms. And so are you saying that that's something that you often do? You often do moments of, it sounds like moments of reflection where you look back yeah. at the things yeah. that you were able to accomplish. Yeah. Yeah. It's not so much I'm visualizing, although I guess that's part of it. There's so much interesting stuff that's woven into this idea. It seems so simple, but even people who use vision boards, I mean, in essence, if you're going to have goals and get it done list, you could be a person where your hack is just, you are good at envisioning, seeing through the walls, getting it done, and then it gets done. Well, that's great if that's your thing, right? Well, that's why I, you probably mentioned, uh, recall that I mentioned at the very beginning of our conversation today is that when you are writing down those those items on your list, um, to me, it's like, you know, writing down your vision. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, we tend to think of vision like in such a big way, like my vision <laughs> right. for my life, yeah. you know, but your vision is literally what is your vision for today? You know, my what is what is it that I want to accomplish today, Tuesday, March 12th, that by the time I'm done with Tuesday, March 12th, at the end of the day, I feel great about the things that I were that I accomplished and the things that I didn't accomplish. Um, I don't associate with my value or my worth as much as I say, okay, um, those things that I was not able to accomplish, uh, I I get the opportunity tomorrow to try again. And and now I because I did have Tuesday, March 12th, I'm smarter, I'm better, I learn more, I acquire more information. Yeah. You know, whatever it was that you decided to do with your day, um, you are a smarter uh, version of yourself, you know, e anyway, because even if you had a horrible day and say it just it was one of those days where you're like, I wish I could have like just slept through that day. And we've had days like that where it seemed like one thing after other just didn't go well. Yeah, right. But even in those days, we're able to learn something from it. You know, we always are able to learn something even from those, you know, those, those days that are not so good that we can use, we can take that information and try to make the next day a better day. <laughs> well, and you know, coming back to that idea of grace, when you have a bad day, many, many times, it's not really your fault, right? It's not your deal, whether you've got kids running around or the dog got sick or, you know, I mean, goodness knows the job called and said, you need to work harder on this project. Sometimes we get swamped 
And it's got nothing to do with being a slacker or, you know, that you can't accomplish goals. It's just that life happened. Yeah. And on those days where you, where you have a lot of things coming in, it's okay if you've already created a to-do list or a get to-do list, a goal list, whatever you want to accomplish. I mean, whatever you want to call it, um, to say, okay, I have all these things that are coming at me. Let me write those things down Yeah. and let me organize how I'm going to accomplish those things. And one of the things that I would recommend is whenever you write down what it is you're trying to accomplish, associate a time to it. And and the reason that I say that is because um, it's really a great thing to do is to once you've written down something that you want to do and you've assigned a time to it, one, it's going to keep you focused. So if you say from three to four o'clock, I'm going to work on this particular task, there's an a increased likelihood that you're going to work on it from three to four o'clock. Yeah. And if you get to four o'clock and you realize like, wow, I only got half of it done. If it's something that you that you do often or that you do repeatedly, you may have to say, okay, do I tend to underestimate the amount of time it takes me to do something like this or do I overestimate the time? That's interesting, yeah. Yeah, and then it's one of the things that they've also found is there's kind of a, a, a way of thinking that we can only really focus on a task for no more than an hour and 30 minutes. Um, I've seen an hour and 30 minutes. I've seen, seen even where some people argue 45 minutes. If you use the Pomodoro technique, it's the concept that we work better at 25 increments. You know, the Pomodoro being fit 25 minutes with a five minute rest. Okay. And so, yeah. So one of the things that I do with my clients is I have them list the things that they do often or repeatedly and really assess how long it typically takes them to do those particular tasks. And then I ask them, okay, are you overestimating or are you underestimating? Because if you underestimate it, and let's say you keep saying to yourself, it only takes me 30 minutes to do this particular thing, but it always takes you 45 minutes. Imagine how much stress you're going to keep producing yeah. because you're going to feel like I keep failing. No, it's just that you're not allowing enough time. Like I am really slow, Chuck. I am the slowest person getting dressed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it takes me so long. I wake up many hours before I have to go somewhere, but I take a really long time to get dressed. I know that. So it's to my advantage to make sure that I, you know, I allow myself plenty of time to get dressed and get going in the morning. It would not be to my advantage to say I can do it in 30 minutes because that's not going to happen. Well, that's funny because now we're diving into self-awareness, which some people have and some people it's a gift and others. I'm not quite sure where it disappeared. But there's that part. And what you were saying about um, underestimating and overestimating, think of somebody who's in a sailboat. They, they know what tacking means, right? You're trying to stay on course, but sometimes you get a little off, so you, you kind of correct that way. And sometimes you correct that way. But that's really brilliant idea is to refine your notion of even the time that you're going to assign to a task. Because if you're thinking you're going to paint the house and you'll be done in 45 minutes, not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And also I'll say too, it's really important as well to, um, even when you're creating that list, to make sure when you're creating it, that you're doing so, keeping in mind um, where you're going to be performing certain tasks. Because if you're trying to do a task and it requires a lot of mental focus, sharp focus, no distractions, it's probably not going to be to your benefit to do that particular task in a time when you're going to be distracted. Yeah. And so how many times as parents have we tried to do something that required our mental focus and the kids are running around and the kids are making noise and you're yelling at the kids for making noise when really you should not be doing that particular right. you know, activity at that time. You know, Really that time probably should be you know, focused on the kids if they're there if you can, or you may need to move yourself to a different place so that you're able to truly focus. And you probably would get that particular task done more effectively and efficiently once you've removed yourself away from the distractions. So even that's something to think about. It's just, you know, there's a time, but also where you perform certain tasks so you can make sure you can do them in an effective way. So as we wrap it up, are there any other takeaways uh, that you want to give us or just takeaways in general about this whole idea? Yeah, I would say, um, one, find what works for you. As we mentioned 
and we, you know, we talked about briefly, uh, you may be one of those people that to do your to do's, um, you're better. It's better for you to list them on paper, you know, with like your sticky notes that you mentioned, yeah. your different color code of sticky notes. I do recommend that you do have it where you can see it. Um, uh, because I, as I mentioned in one of our earlier conversations is that oftentimes when you don't see something, then it's forgotten about. So I love <laughs> yeah, the right. idea of putting things out. And I've, I've even found that that can be a negative of some of the tech, the, the um, the apps that are on computers and on phones. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, because they're not necessarily where you can see them. So I actually recommend to my clients that you may put it on your electronic device, but also print it out. Uh huh. And then if you are going to be going to your comp- your your phone, especially, only look at your app to see what you're trying to do. Be careful not to get distracted. Don't start checking emails and text messages and all those different things. The dancing cat video could interrupt my my getting things done. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because chances are you're not going, you're going to get, you're going to get off track. And so, you know, I would say find one, what works for you, but also recognize if the thing that you are decided to use as a tool to help you do that, make sure that you're using the tool appropriately. (laughs) Yeah, good stuff. Well, it's really great to have you back, Angela. Thanks so much for all the wisdom. Yeah, you're very welcome. I'm happy to uh, to share my thoughts, and thank you so much for inviting me here today. Well, I'm sure we'll see you again soon. Angela Moore, who's a licensed therapist, she's also a master trainer and a coach, and uh, just a whole lot of good stuff today for something that some of us may just take for granted in life, right? We want to thank you for listening to a Healthier Michigan podcast. It's brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. If you like the show and you want to know more, you can check us out on our refreshed website, a healthiermichigan.org slash podcast. You can leave us ratings or reviews in the obvious places, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We've also got a YouTube channel. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. You can get new episodes, a lot of old episodes too, and you can carry them around uh, while you're making lists, right, uh, with your smartphone or tablet. Be sure to subscribe to us too on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or your favorite podcast app. I'm Chuck Gatica. Be well. Be well.